Hey guys, welcome back to WixFix. I hope you're having a fantastic day. In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how to create a lazy loader inside of Wix. If you don't know what a lazy loader is, if I scroll down, you're gonna notice that this database keeps populating data as I scroll down until it reaches the end of the database and then it stops showing up the, the loader. Let me go ahead and just show you it one more time. So I'm gonna go back to the editor, press preview, and right now this repeater is set up to only show three at a time. So if I scroll down quick enough, you're gonna see it loads more. If I scroll down again, it's gonna keep doing it until it reaches the end of the database. So let's go ahead and show you how to set that up. The first thing we're gonna do is set up the repeater. So what we're gonna do is come up to add. We're gonna to go to list and grid, and we're just gonna pull out one that we want to use. And for this tutorial, I just wanna use this one right here. Now for this, I'm gonna go ahead and press stretched and I'm going to go ahead and also bring it in quite a bit, just like that. And I'm also gonna go into the layout and make sure that everything is centered and not aligned to the left, just like that. Next, we'll also want to make sure that we have a database set up, which for this tutorial, we are using one for news, which this is just a database that Wix has already basically provided. If you don't already have a database, what you can do is come over to this content manager tab right here and press add to site. If you don't see that, it's gonna be in the add button right here, content manager, and you'll see an option to add to site. Now, if you don't already have a collection, all you have to do is press new collection. You can create your own, or you can just add a preset from Wix's already pre-built databases, which for this one, I chose the news one right here which if you aren't familiar with what CMS and databases and dynamic pages are, I will have a couple tutorials linked in the description if you would like to learn more on that. But for now, we're gonna go ahead and add a data set to the page, which you're gonna see this little icon right here. And this is only visible inside the editor. Once you publish the site and pull up this page, it is not gonna be visible. It's only here for us to work with. And what we want to do is go into the settings and we want this collection to connect to the news database that we set up. And for this tutorial, I also want to limit the number of items to display to just three, because ideally I just want one row to load when the page loads. And then as the user scrolls, then more can load after that. And this will help speed up the load process for the page. But I can go ahead and exit out of there. And now what we're gonna go ahead and do is go ahead and select the items inside of the repeater. We're gonna press connect to data. And you're gonna see an option to connect to a data set, which the only data set on the page is this news one. So we're gonna select the news data set. And the image source, of course, is gonna to connect to the image source inside the database. So you're gonna notice all of the images change to the database images. And we're also gonna go ahead and just select the text. We're gonna connect this to the data as well. So this one, let's just do like the reporter's name. For the, this text right here, we're gonna connect this one to the title of this news article. And then for this title, or for this text right here, we're going to connect this one to this subtitle. So we're just gonna scroll down a little bit and select subtitle. Now you are gonna notice that in some cases, this is going to cause your repeater to mess up a little bit. So it does take a little bit of, I guess a little work to make sure that it doesn't mess anything up. But what I want to do is just grab the height of this image. I'm gonna select the item and make sure that the height matches and there does seem to still be a little bit of space but i'm just going to temporarily fix that for this video just by bringing the image down a little bit the next thing we need to set up is an additional strip now for this strip we're just going to make it a normal white strip and in this strip we're also going to go ahead and put in a loader now this loader i got from a site called lord icon which i also have a tutorial on that which i will link in the description below they have several different choices for really cool loaders you can use so feel free to check that out now we have the basic page set up already but now we do need to add a little bit of code to make it work now of course just as usual i will have the code on my website and the link to that will be in the description so feel free to just copy and paste it over, but I will be showing you the important things to make sure you change inside the code to make sure it works on your site. Let's go ahead and enable dev mode. So we're gonna come up to dev mode and press turn on. And now you're gonna notice that we have this little code panel, which we can 
code things. And we're also gonna have the properties panel over here to the right in which we can name elements on the page. Now, what I want to do is go ahead and select this strip right here. And we're gonna name this one loading strip. And if we look at the way I named this strip, we're gonna see that the first letter of the first word is lowercase. And then the first letter of the second word is actually capitalized. And this is what's known in the coding world as camel case. And this is how you can easily identify things inside of code. So we're gonna call this one loading strip with a capital S. Next thing we need to name is actually grab this little image right here, which we're just gonna call this one load more, just like that. And we're also gonna set the default value to hidden. However, what we're gonna be doing with the code is making this visible when something is triggered, which we actually need to set up that trigger right now. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and click this loading strip. We're gonna click the background strip, which we named loading strip. We're gonna come down to the properties panel and you're gonna see a command right here or a function right here that says on viewport enter. And we're just gonna go ahead and press add event. And basically you're gonna notice that it added this little function right here or this event right here. And now it's time to tell this function what to do. So the first thing we want to do when the strip enters the viewport is we want to make sure that this load more icon is visible. So we're gonna go ahead and start coding this. And what we want to do is type in load. It's gonna go ahead and suggest the only two things on the page with load in the name, but we're gonna select load more and we're gonna do dot show. And we're gonna add a little just like that. The next thing we need to do is go ahead and call this data set, this data set one right here. And we need to tell it to show more items. So we're gonna go ahead and say dollar sign W, hashtag, hashtag data set one and we're gonna type in load more. And then underneath that, we're gonna type then, and we're gonna add some bracket. We're gonna add some parentheses, just like that. And on the outside of the inner parentheses, we're going to add a equal sign, greater than sign, and some curly brackets. And now we need to tell it what to do after the data set loads more. So if we think about it, after another set of three have loaded, we want this load more symbol to then disappear. So we're gonna do dollar sign W. We're gonna choose the load more image and we're gonna do hide just like that. Super, super easy. Now, if you copy and paste this into your own website, you need to make sure that this loading strip right here, the name loading strip, matches the strip that you put the load more icon or animation into. And then load more, of course, you need to make sure that the name matches the image or the GIF or, or GIF, whatever you have right here. And then of course, data set one, you will need to make sure that this matches data set one. This is pretty simple. Now, if we come up all the way to our page and press preview and we scroll down, we're going to notice it is starting to work just fine. But that basically wraps it up for the video today, guys. If you guys did enjoy, please consider giving this video a like and consider subscribing for more Wix content coming out really soon. Thank you all again, and I'll see you all in the next one.